Thank you for visiting bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'd like to show you one of the best-reviewed commentaries on the book of Genesis. Before I do, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel to see the latest videos on Bible commentaries, study Bibles, and other resources that help people understand Scripture. Victor P. Hamilton is the author of one of the best commentaries, best-reviewed commentaries on the book of Genesis. It's found in the New International Commentary on the Old Testament series, and as you can see, it consists of two volumes. Volume 1 covers Genesis 1 through 17. Volume 2 covers Genesis 18 through 50. Hamilton wrote these volumes from 1989 to 1995. So the information regarding the most recent, bi recent biblical scholarship on the book of Genesis is about 25 years old, but not terribly out of date. The information regarding the exegesis, theology, and the suggested application for Genesis is... Um, timeless, and modern readers will find it very relevant. The NICOT series, theologically, is considered broadly evangelical, and that's how I would describe these two volumes as well. There are, however, a few issues that people who are, people who want to use a commentary on Genesis often want to know about before they, before they make a purchase. One regards the issue of authorship. How does the commentary author understand the authorship of Genesis. Hamilton does not believe that Moses alone wrote the book of Genesis. Now, some would consider that perspective outside of quote-unquote conservative evangelical theology, and I am, my intention is not to settle that debate once and for all in this video, but just to let you know on one of the more common issues people want to know about what Hamilton's position is. Hamilton subscribes to a multiple author viewpoint of Genesis. So he does not believe Moses alone wrote it. He believes in the theory that there were about five authors and that the book was composed perhaps over generations of time by multiple authors and editors. That's clear when you read the introduction in the first volume that Hamilton subscribes to the multiple author perspective. He also makes clear, though, that he doesn't mean that that in his view that doesn't mean that there are errors in the text so while he subscribes to multiple authors he still holds that the the text the final version of the text is what god intended for for readers to have and it will not lead people astray and that it does not have errors in the original manuscript so that is his perspective on the authorship issue uh, another issue that people who are interested in a Genesis commentary often want to know about is what is the uh, commentator's perspective on the creation account in Genesis 1 and 2. And Hamilton, on that doctrine, um, he does not subscribe to a literal interpretation as it's defined by the young earth creationist perspective. Um, he thinks that thousands of years is a likely possibility of the word day, for example, a long period of time, in other words, not necessarily a 24-hour period of time. And I think that it's in, his perspective is revealed when he elaborates on that, and he says, this is a quote, the immediate advantage of this interpretation, and meaning the interpretation of day as as thousands of years or a long period of time. Quote, the immediate advantage of this interpretation is that it is more reconcilable with science, or so it appears. So whatever your perspective on that, that, that issue, you can tell from that quote um, a little bit about Hamilton's hermeneutics or his, his interpretation of the creation account in Genesis 1 and 2. As far as the intended audience for these commentaries, um, it's pastors. Doesn't mean that pastors were the only be the only ones to benefit from it, but the intended audience is pastors. Um, each passage of Genesis is uh, discussed um, with regard to exegesis, theology, and sometimes there's some application. It depends on the volume. Uh, and it depends on the author in this particular series. With these volumes, there is some reflection given by the author, and that's about as close as a person will get to an application section. A lot of modern commentaries have an application section 
um, connected to each passage. Uh, this series doesn't necessarily, but there's some, we might call them devotional reflections that the reader can um, use as kind of a starting place to build application if they're using, uh, if they're teaching or preaching through Genesis in a ministry setting. So uh, pastors, I th or, or pastors are the target audience for this. Um, professors, this might... This might not be um, academic enough for professors, depending on on what level they they teach. Um, there is not a lot of textual criticism and discussion of Hebrew um, in this. I would put Gordon Wenham's in the Word Biblical Commentary series is maybe a little bit more academic than this one, and and this Hamilton and Wenham are both a little bit more academic than. Kenneth Matthews' uh, well-reviewed commentary on Genesis, for instance. Um, for lay people, I think a lay person would do okay with this uh, series. I think it would be helpful if they had some experience using Bible reference material. If they were used to using commentaries, then I think that these volumes would be um, accessible. Um, if a person is not uh, used to using commentaries, there might be some better options. Uh, available, more introductory options available. And, and for those, I would just point you to um, the Genesis page on my website, bestbiblecommentaries.com. And you can see, you can find some introductory material um, regarding Genesis commentaries. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. I am very grateful that you watch it. And, um, and uh, I hope that it was helpful to you in learning more about these commentaries. Thank you.